Welcome to another DIY video. This time we are going to install the level 2 charger for your electric vehicle. It will work for most of the brands as long as they support J1772 connectors. We bought a Nissan Leaf and it comes with the level 2 charger that plugs into the standard range receptacle. I will show you how to install everything. You can use this as a reference if you are installing any third-party chargers such as ChargePoint. Okay, let's get started. I bought this 40-50R receptacle, a 40 amp GFCI circuit breaker and 30 feet of Romax. The first question is, how do I know what size of circuit breaker do I need? It all depends on the output of your charger. If your charger has the output of 32 amp, you need a 40 amp breaker. This is the 80% rule in National Electrical Code. In the other words, you can use 1.25 as the multiplier and find out the breaker size you need. For Nissan Leaf, this is the charger comes with the vehicle. Pay attention to the 240 volt. The output is 30 amp, not even 32 amp, so we need 30 times 1.25, which is 37.5 amp breaker. But there is no such breaker in this world. The next one up is 40. That's why we need a 40 amp breaker. If you read the owner's manual of the vehicle, you will notice that they will tell you to use a 50 amp breaker. It doesn't hurt, but it is not necessary because the charger's specification is the one you should follow. The next question is, how do I know what size of the cable do I need? This is the chart you need to look at. I did all the research so that you don't have to do it. As you see, the Romax specification is different in the States. They have NMB, but in Canada we have NMD90. The maximum amp you are allowed to connect in US and Canada can be different. Since I have determined my breaker to be 40 amp, now I need to buy some NMD90 at 8 gauge. Here is another scenario. Say, if you need a 50 amp breaker, what size of cable do you need? Yes, you need 6 gauge, both in the state and in Canada. But what if you choose the wrong cable? Let's say you choose 8 gauge. What will happen? This is very bad. It can burn your house down. Electrical work is dangerous. My advice to you is not to trust any YouTuber religiously. Before starting your work, do your own research and verify their information is correct or not. This is my garage. The builder installed the drywall for us. There is a foam board insulation on top of the fiberglass. I think it's the new building code for fire protection. I am using the professional installer bit to drill a hole to the basement. Notice that there is a stud on the right hand side. The drill bit went through the wood just like that. There is a DIY tips I want to share with you. I am using the floor register as the reference point. How did I do it? This is the main floor. On the opposite side of the wall is the garage. I measure it from the door to the floor register at 28 inches. Then you use the stud finder to find the stud here as another reference point. In the garage, I measured roughly 28 inches from the garage door and most importantly, look for the closest stud. Now, you know exactly where to drill and where to get the cable from the basement. The cable is thick and it is very difficult to work with in the basement. By code, you need to run the cable through the joist. This is pretty straightforward. Everything looks good here. I think we are ready to go back to the garage and install the receptacle. This is a little bit tricky. I am using Gorilla Glue to attach a piece of wood on top of the stud. 
practice compensates the thickness of the foam board. Don't forget to use water to activate the Gorilla Glue. It's amazingly strong. Slide the cable through the box and secure it using screws to the stud. By design, the box only needs to put screws on one side. That looks pretty good. Strip the cable slowly and carefully. For DIY people, since we don't do this every single day, don't use a knife or razor blade to do it. You can easily damage the cable inside. It's a good practice to leave at least 6 inches wiring in the junction box. Don't forget to connect the ground copper wire to the box, even if it is plastic. Next, we use the metal repair patch to fix the drywall. This is not cheap, but the result is good. After that, we use the fiberglass mesh tape on top. For DIY people, I have to say it again, we don't do this every day. Stay away from using the paper tape. Fiberglass is much forgiving and easier to work with when you put the drywall compound on top. Trust me, I have been through all that. To get proper support and for better insulation, I am injecting some expanding foam behind the mesh. It's a bit messy to work with, but when it dries, it will be rock solid. While we are waiting for the foam to dry, let's go down to the basement and install the circuit breaker. If you have done your research, you should ask this question. Do I need to upgrade the service panel to 200 amp? The answer is, it depends. For me, I have 100 amp. Is that good enough? Yes, because our furnace, water boiler and stove are powered by natural gas. Let's move on and work on the GFCI breaker. Now we have four wires, black, red, white and copper. Most of the modern homes in US and Canada are single phase. Ignore the ground wire, we have three wires. I don't want to go into details. In short, there are line 1 and line 2, which is red and black. Together we will get 240 volts. If you measure either line 1 or line 2 with the neutral wire in white color, you will get 120 volt. For GFCI, the white color wires goes to the middle. The red and the black color wires goes to either left or right. It doesn't matter, either way it will work. GFCI is not required by code in Ontario. If your receptacle is in the enclosed garage, always check with your local code, but there is nothing wrong to exceed code. The GFCI breaker has a special white color wire. This goes to the neutral bus. If you don't have a GFCI, you connect the white color wire coming from the cable to the neutral bus too. Of course, the ground copper wire goes to the ground bus on the panel. All right, let's turn it on. Let's test the red and the black color wires. We got 243 volts. Now we got 121 volt on neutral with either red or black color wire. Perfect. Everything is good so far. The sub panel was another DIY project I did a couple of years ago. I did not have any video at that time. I will post the link in the description if you're interested in it. But don't criticize on my sub panel if it is up to code or not. It's not part of the scope of this video. Going back to the garage and do some clean up on the expanding foam and other cosmetic stuff like sanding and painting to make it look professional. 
Another DIY tips: always use roller if possible, and avoid paint brush to get good result. This is the final step to connect the receptacle with the wires. It's a good practice to wrap those exposed contacts with electrical tape. Final testing on the voltage before going into the next step. Everything looks perfect. If you don't want to do any drywall work, yes, you can buy something like this from Amazon. If you hire someone to do it, I am pretty sure that's what you get because it saves a lot of time. For me, the item was not even available at that time. The range receptacle was the only thing I could get from a local hardware store. Well, I have to say, the end result looks fantastic. This is the charger comes with the vehicle. Installation is very simple. I don't think I need to explain much. This part is very easy. Let's turn it on in the basement. Now we got what? Green light. That means it's ready to charge the car. I am so excited. It's charging. The yellow light lit up. First time charging the vehicle. See the blue LED light is flashing too. Awesome. This DIY project is so successful. For additional safety, I bought this heat alarm from Amazon. Do not install smoke detector in the garage. Just Google it for more information, and you will understand why. Canadian winter is really harsh. Weather tech is good for your car. I am not affiliated with them. I just want to share my experience with you from the bottom of my heart. Finally, getting the windows tinted makes a huge difference. That looks awesome. Give this a thumbs up if you find some good information in this video. My goal is to inspire more people into DIY. If you love DIY, you may want to check out other videos on my channel. Remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.